It's infamous because, well, it's really addictive, it's on the street, but one thing it is good for is pain killing. But here in our group, what we do is combinatorial synthesis, where we try to create many molecules that are similar, and we test them in vivo to see what effects these different molecules have. Hopefully, maybe we get less side effects, so we get more potency. So that's the point of our research. So here we have uh, our first literature review slide, and one of our big articles that we looked at was this one about the syn synthesis of 1H15 benzodiazepine with the silicon dioxide and sulfuric acid catalyst, and there are some yields here. I mean, I can see that. There are some yields here, and we use this uh, research paper to base our Here you can see a lot of those benzos here. We have different R groups that you can see. There's some hexane rings, some all these different R groups. And we, uh, I think we made this one, and there are a lot of benzos that we made. But from these, from this article, we took this catalyst and we put it into our own research. And this, this one over here is one four benzodiazepine. We were originally gonna make these, but our research direction turned, so it's not as relevant now, but it also helped us form our procedures. So, yeah. Okay, so this is about like the bio side of our, exper our uh, experiment. So basically, benzodiazepines, um, they travel through the synaptic junction as shown over there, and they bind to the subunits of GABA receptors. And so basically, we looked at some research where certain GABA receptors were mutated in rats, and the side effects of benzodiazepines were kind of limited in, um, in those uh, mutated uh, rat cells. And so some of the side effects include like amnesia, which is pretty harsh. So uh, we were inspired by this, and we decided to like take a, take a route so that we'd uh, make benzodiazepines that bind to specific sub uh, subunits in the receptors and would like uh, dampen the effects of like, the molecule in general. Okay, so when we worked on the synthesis of benzodiazepines, we used two different uh, synth synth um, synthetic pathways. The first is uh, phenyldiamine and p <laughs> Sorry. Um, we started with one molar, molar equivalent of phenyl, phenyl, phenyl diamines and two molar equivalences of two different ketones. We also added one molar equivalent um, of sulfamic acid catalytes. The reaction was stirred at room temperature uh, for two different amounts of time. Uh, compound 1A was stirred for 30 minutes Compound one B was stirred, uh, one compound one C and one D were stirred for another ninety minutes. The reaction conditions were modified for a compound one uh, D in which we also added uh, ethanol, uh, ethanol and heated it with a dark uh, stark trap to help uh, the reaction go to completion uh, faster. So in a uh, synthesis of one H one comma five. Benzodiazepines from phenyldiamines and ketones, uh, aza, Michael, followed by the con condensation um, of aniline with ketones. One, one semi-column uh, molar ratio, one point column molar ratio, um, phenyldiamine to ketones, one molar ratio to sulfamic acid and catalase, solvent-free, one pot synthesis and except for um, 1B. Okay, so um, compound 1A, as you can see there, it was <coughs> it was a yellow solid and we purified it through flash chromatography where we used ethyl, ac ethyl acetate and hexane as a solvent and um, it was like a dry pack polyp and compound 1B um, is up there and it, it was like a reddish, uh, yellowish orange, orange colored compound 
and compounds one one C and one D over there, they were black with like a mucus-like consistency. And all of these products were uh, characterized with NMR. And the picture on the left is um, a, a crystallized uh, compound one. So the second synthetic route that we pursued was synthesizing benzodiazepines using shell coats. So on the right, on the top, you can see a um, reaction schematic. So we use benzaldehyde and benzaldehyde derivatives, combined that with acetophenone, and added um, a sodium hydroxide catalyst and ethanol. We refluxed that reaction for about 45, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on the benzaldehyde derivative, and we got shell coats. So, um, after we got shell cones, our plans for the future are to use phenylene dye and create benzodiazepines that look like that, which are a class of novel benzodiazepines that we also plan to use. So for the synthesis of our shell cones, you can see some of our shell cones, they weren't successfully synthesized due to some um, troubles that we encountered. So one of the uh, things that we encountered was we tried to um, use a TMS protecting group on the OH on some of the benzaldehydes that you can see. However, um, yeah, so on compound 2B and 2E, you can see on the benzaldehyde there's an OH, and that was preventing the reaction from going to completion. So we tried to use a TMS protecting group, however, that didn't work, therefore we don't have those shell cones. Um, shell cone 2A was synthesized successfully, however, after the, the reaction was complete, we realized that our, shell, our product was an excess starting material, so that required pu um, further purification. After we got that, the resulting product was a um, pale yellow solid. Compound 2C was synthesized successfully too in good yield, and this we ran into no issues with synthesizing compound 2C, and the resulting product was also a pale yellow solid. Compound, compound 2D, which is not pictured on here, was also synthesized extremely successfully and with good yield, and um, that product was actually a gray was actually um, a light gray solid. However, when it was dissolved, it turned blue, which was really interesting. And compound 2F was synthesized, and it resulted in a bright orange-red color, which we think is really interesting. So we hatched our invention in a salt water concentration with a pH of around eight, and that was done by adding baking soda to the water. We also added around 30 eggs per 250 milliliters of water and stirred it all into a stir plate because we needed a constant airflow for the shrimp to hatch. And so the shrimp, we got a hatch rate of around 90% and most of the shrimp hatched within 24 hours. We then fed the shrimp yeast every day. Uh, we administered the pure compound 1A from the previous slide uh, into our shrimp with it in different concentrations, and then we use a abscope camera to record the movements of our shrimp under a microscope. These videos were uh, taken in 50 frames per second. Okay, and so to create the concentration of the different, um, of our drug, we started with um, our co pure compound 1A, and we dissolved that in different amounts of DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, to create different concentrations. So we ended up testing two concentrations so we have a 0.27 molar solution and a 0.53 molar solution. We injected five microliters of each of our solutions into the tiny drop of water that the shrimp was in, and we recorded their results, we recorded their movement for the next 10 to 15 minutes. So to uh, find the height and width of the shrimp, we um, coded a program in Python using OpenCV which is a library of functions that are geared towards artificial intelligence and computer vision. So first, what we did, we created a simple color filter that filters out just the shrimp, as you can see, and everything else turns black. And after the shrimp is filtered out, we made the program create a bounding box around what um, is the largest feature, so we could ignore like, the smaller areas that are also filtered. And so after we created a bounding box, we recorded the height and width of that box onto an XLAB document. So however, we did run into a few issues. So for example, sometimes after adding the chemical, it was hard for the program to distinguish between the shrimp and its background. And because the video was recorded at 50 frames per second, it took a considerable amount of time to run through one video. 
So yeah, no, we didn't end up doing a few videos in Tessera a couple of concentrations, but we did adjust our program to record just the center of the box. So now we can log the, um, the distance the shrimp traveled throughout the video, and we added a timestamp so we can record what during what time in the video that the shrimp. We used Microsoft Excel to find the distance traveled by the shrimp in pixels. And so these revol resulting values were divided by the difference in frames to get the speed of the shrimp in pixels per frame. So those speeds are graphed on here. The red graph shows our control shrimp. Uh, the green graph shows our shrimp in a concentration of, of in a 0.27 molar concentration of our drug. You'll notice a slower speed, and that's an indication that our drug is affecting how fast we move. Our blue graph, we believe it shows the effects linked to the overdose of our drug, because it's reported that an overdose would cause confusion or dizziness. So the video of the shrug, we saw that they swam faster in smaller circles. But these results show that our benzodiazepines may have uh, neurobiological effects that can open up the new pathway for synthesis of other drugs. Um, however, a lot more testing needs to be done, which would include running more trials and the possibility of using a different organism. Also, future research could include longer trials with Environment, they put them onto a microscope slide, so we weren't able to transfer the shrimp back into the natural environment due to peer contamination. But that would be another area of research we might do now. Better results and 